Right, so I've got the chat going. So if you want to ask anything, you can stick it in a chat or you can make a comment or add uh, pearls of wisdom um, if you uh, want to add anything to there. Um, and uh, all right, I think I've got myself set up. I've got a screen here with all sorts of windows open. Um, great, there we go. Uh, so thank you for joining us. Um, a little bit of background so from me so until um until last summer i was the director of uh, cyo which is a schools ministry based in colchester uh, here in essex and um uh, we uh, we work uh, we worked across uh, secondary schools which is some work in primary schools uh, but also in the two fe colleges so we had uh, one of our members of staff was a chaplain in the two fe colleges so that's colchester sixth form college where they're are about three and a half thousand students because uh, Colchester has only, we've got two grammar schools that have got six forms. Uh, otherwise, all of the secondary schools here are only 11 to 16. Uh, and after that, students either go to Colchester Six or College, which uh, has a good reputation and draws students from further afield than just Colchester. They come in from Clapton and Braintree. Some of them are traveling up to an hour to get here. And then also we have um, Colchester Institute, which is a joint FEHE college um, uh, with more of the vocational qualifications and all the way through to degree courses and uh, and beyond. And so one of our team was the chaplain uh, in both of those places. Um, <clears throat> at Culture Six Form College, we've had uh, uh, several, had a, a succession of chaplains as they've worked with us and then moved on and then others have taken their place. So if I show pictures of uh, Culture Six Form College, the chaplain will appear to change from picture to picture, but that's because they did as the years went by. Um, uh, my role now is I work with prayer space in schools. So uh, I was one, we ran one of the earliest of the prayer spaces in state secondary schools here. And because of that, I connected with 24 seven prayer and I've been part of the national volunteer team uh, since 2009, well, since before it was a team in, in 2009. And um, then more recently when I stepped down from CYO, the, uh, 24 seven prayer asked if I would lead, head up the uh, prayer spaces in schools across GB because they're growing internationally. And the person who was doing that, Phil Togwell, uh, now oversees kind of the international side of prayer spaces in schools, which is uh, very exciting. So the UK leading the way in prayer space for prayer spaces in schools, but helping to uh, support that around the world. Um, uh, as we go along, please feel free to interrupt, to uh, heckle, to uh, uh, if you've got uh, helpful insight to share, please, please do that. That would be helpful to all of us. Um, or if you've got questions that crop up as we go along, I'd, I'd rather we kind of fielded those as we went along rather than saving them all up for the end, because um, uh, you might have forgotten by then. And I think sometimes it's easy to, to address questions in, in the context in which they, they arise. So. Um, I'm very happy to be heckled and uh, Nigel can be the adjudicator if we uh, get into any, you know. <laughs> so what are prayer spaces about? Um, well, um, the, a simple definition of what prayer space in schools is all about is that it's about creating space in schools or colleges where pupils or students can pause to reflect and pray. It's about creating space for students to pray Well, and, and staff as well. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, prayer spaces uh, enable children and young people of all faiths and none uh, to, ex uh, to explore spirituality, faith and life's big questions in a safe, creative and interactive way. And um, <clears throat> that kind of definition of what these things are about, uh, as you will realise, all of those words are chosen with care. Um, we... Uh, we're, we're glad to welcome students of all faiths and none. These come from, prayer spaces come from a Christian understanding of prayer, but we recognize that, uh, so all the secondary schools we worked with here in Colchester and both of the colleges uh, are all are all state, rather than none of them have a religious foundation. Um, and so we're used to working in settings where uh, Christianity isn't privileged. Um, we are part just part of the, the makeup of the school or college and uh, we ha we are glad to be inclusive and welcoming of all i think it's really i think it's a great opportunity actually i don't think it's a disadvantage at all i think 
it allows us to represent the welcome, uh, the compassion of Jesus in those places, to to come with the welcome of Jesus who welcomed all um, wherever, whatever place they came from, uh, whatever their beliefs, uh, whatever their lifestyle. Um, so we welcome, we welcome all. Um, <clears throat> Press spaces started out as pretty much as a sort of classroom type activity to which uh, groups would come for lessons. And uh, that's, there's still some potential for that in FE, but I think um, uh, there are other ways that we can do that that make these spaces even more accessible to more people. But in a in a school, they might look look a bit like this. So this is a secondary school classroom. As you can see, they're quite uh, they're quite colourful. They're creative. They look different to anything else that you might commonly expect to find in a school or in a college. <clears throat> We've run them in libraries. It's a library. You'll notice some of the same stuff in there, um, and. Um, uh, and then uh, I'm going to skip through these. And so I want to move on to talking a little bit about um, uh, Coach the Sixth Form College, which is where we started out with some of the, the first prayer spaces. So this first part is going to be quite um, it's fairly historical in some ways. So this is about the stuff that we've done here. But I hope that because it's it's very direct. It's actual stuff that we've actually done. It will be um, it will be inspiring, and uh, will give you some ideas as well, and possibly some triggers for asking questions about how we might make that work in other settings. So, but a little bit of history because you know we're quite pleased with what we've done here. So, the first prayer space that we ran was in um, February two thousand and nine. It was only the third prayer space we'd ever run anywhere, and we ran it in uh, Colchester Sixth Form College in their drama studio and um, we had about 10 activities in there and we were open for students to drop in when they were, whenever they wanted to and um, although we didn't see a huge number of students what we did notice was that um, those that came in greatly valued the space they enjoyed the activities but mostly they they seemed to appreciate that this was a safe space it was a calm space it was a welcoming space and um, <clears throat> in particular, we had one activity that was a kind of creative one. Uh, people decorated a tile as part of a, of a th sort of kind of a thoughtful activity. And uh, quite a few students would sit around this. And as, as they were doing the activity, they would chat to, this, to the team that were running the space. And uh, as a result of that, we recognized there was a real need for some kind of chaplaincy presence in the college. The college had, didn't have a chaplaincy at that time. And so in the follow up, my follow up meeting with the deputy principal, I, in a sort of fairly casual throwaway line, uh, I hadn't thought about it very much beforehand. I said it struck us that one of the real needs that was had emerged that we noticed through running the press space was that um, there was a need for a kind of what, what I described as a youth work style of chaplaincy, um, not knowing what kind of response I'd get back. And uh, and the vice principal said, Immediately, she said, well, if you could provide that for us, we'll have it. So um, so we went away and planned how to do chaplaincy in the Sixth Form College. And uh, so this was in February. Uh, by, so in October, our first chaplain started in the college. Uh, she worked there a couple of days a week, uh, went, went around meeting students, organising activities, uh, contributing to uh, to some of the curricular stuff. Um, uh, and uh, just making her Christian presence felt around the college. Um, so that was that was Catherine. Our second, the second year that we ran it, uh, we were in a classroom in the history block. Uh, didn't work so well. We did have a few students in, but we missed the passing trade. Um, we didn't have classes coming in, so this was in a classroom, but it was open to students to come in to whenever they wanted to, and. Um, as a learning point, I think we felt this this wasn't so helpful. Um, there were no organised groups coming in, so people didn't come in because they had to. Uh, it was in a classroom, so the barrier to entry was, you know, the threshold was quite high. You had to choose, you had to peer in through the door and choose to go in. And um, it wasn't in an area of high traffic. Um, it wasn't somewhere where students would naturally congregate. It was quite out of the way. And so 
not unexpectedly, not many students took part. Um, uh, as a result of that, the, the college still really valued having this prayer space activity for a week. Um, but as a result of that, we had a further conversation with them and said, is there somewhere more public that we could do this? And the college has a concourse in the middle, in the heart of the college. And we said, could we go on the concourse? And uh, they, they scratched their chins for a bit. And they went, well, yes, I, I suppose you could. And so we set up on a part of the concourse here with uh, these activities spread around. And um, students, so this is a place where students would uh, sit for private study, um, but also they passed by. So sort of the bottom of the screen, you can imagine that's, that's a sort of a, a corridor space. And uh, there are always people walking by. And uh, just engagement with this thing rocketed. We had we had students there pretty much the whole week um, uh, and uh, very effective it was too. Um, uh, we had a team of volunteers with us and uh, over that week they, they chatted with hundreds of students. I think we had about 300 students engaged with it over that week. Um, and there were about eight or ten different activities for students to do and I'll explain a little bit more about what some of them are just to give you an idea of the sort of things that we've been, got, been getting students to do. But uh, key things from this were public space works well because it's visible, people can walk past, they can look at it, they can eye it up before they engage. But also once people start engaging, it becomes an attractive thing. Stu other students see other students there, it's easy for students to go, oh, would you like to come and have, you know, well, I've, I've done this, it was really good, would you like to come in on it? So um, uh, much, much, much easier setting. Some of the, the activities that we do with students, um, uh, this, is the, this is called Sorry, and uh, it's um, cards. And uh, people uh, are invited to write down, you know, we all get things wrong, it says. Um, it's, that's only human, but sometimes it can help to say sorry. And so students write down what they're sorry for onto a card and peg it to a, to a string. And as you can see, uh, many of them did. Uh, this is a, a thankful activity. Um, what are you thankful for? So, so very, very simple. Uh, write it onto a heart-shaped post-it note. So we just have, have a ton of heart-shaped post-it notes because when people write on them and stick them together, as you can see, it builds up and makes a quite an attractive kind of space. And as one of the features of prayer spaces is that they, they collect these individual responses, but they build up a, a kind of a shared picture. Um, so this was thankful, uh, post-it note stuck on the window because that looks nice. This was an activity we did um, uh, uh, on another year, another year we did this one. Uh, you are unique. And so we had these um, little uh, rectangles of acetate and uh, we got students to put a, th a fingerprint or a thumbprint on it and then to write down three words that they would use to describe themselves uh, or if they couldn't choose the words to get their friend to uh, get the because they often come with friends <clears throat> uh, and to ask their friend to describe them in three words and so um so we've got a few uh, a, a few people here have written down um uh a few things on here uh, so one person written eyes Presume, I don't know, eyes, loud, dramatic. We've got joyful, ambitious, reliable, strong-minded, lazy, happy. I don't know how that goes together. Clumsy, trustworthy, friendly. And the point being that uh, every, uh, every um, strip of acetate was different. Everyone was unique. Uh, but it declared something special about each of those people that took part. Um, and then once we'd done that, we hung them all up with treasury tags over a stairwell safely, I hasten to add. Um, and um, that again becomes an attractive way of um, showing what people are thinking. <clears throat> uh, another activity that has featured pretty much every time we've done uh, our press space, we call our press space Sanctum. Every time we've done that in college is this one called Priorities. And we've got 30, about 30 blocks and each one has a, has a different word or a few words on it describing something that somebody might consider to be uh, a, a priority in their life. So we've got physical attractiveness, resourcefulness, patience, happy marriage, a generous person, strength, a large salary, all sorts of things. So some of them quite material, some of them quite 
um, more kind of uh, character qualities. And we get students to, um, to decide what are the top six for them? What are their priorities right now? So giving them a, a space of some self-reflection. Uh, and it, it still amazes me how, um, how seriously young people will take, take these activities, how, how, how much they engage with them, and also how much they, they derive from them, how much they learn from them. You can have, uh, this activity can take 10 minutes if you, um, if you help talk a young person through it and then ask them some questions about what, why they chose what they chose. It can be a great conversation starter with, uh, with, um, with a student. Um, <clears throat> another of the activities that we've done, <clears throat> this one's called Calm. And uh, in that blue jar is uh, some water and glycerin with some glitter in it. And you shake the jar and put it down and just watch the glitter settle. And as you watch it settle, you sit and, and, and are still. And there's a narration on the iPods that talks you through, uh, talks you through that process. And um, <clears throat> it only takes two minutes, but uh, it, people that do that say they find it uh, so helpful just taking two minutes out to be still to focus on something and to allow themselves to be calm, to relax. Um, and imagine this is going on on the concourse in a busy college. Um, but it, uh, as well as providing that two minutes of calm to that person, it perhaps teaches them something, teaches them a skill, helps them to discover something important about how they can live in a more calm way. So these, uh, these activities not only uh, are important in their moment, but they can have, uh, they can teach skills that will be worth taking, taking on into life. Um, this is quite a fun one. This is called Life Path, where we would ask to write on some bits, prepared bits of paper, um, their answers to two statements. When I was younger, I wanted to be, and now I want to be. And, um, Again, you've got a whole variety. So somebody wanted to be a mermaid or a marine biologist, <laughs> but now they want to be content and fulfilled. Uh, somebody wanted to be a princess when they were younger. Uh, now they want to be teaching English somewhere poor. Uh, when I was younger, I wanted to be a footballer. Now I want to be an inspiration. Uh, what's fascinating is how students interpret the questions. But then also the uh, the reflection that takes place, um, and again you can have some very very interesting conversations with people about their their hopes, their dreams, their lives, their aspirations, uh, the things that have caused their life, their view about what they want to do to change. Uh, all good. This one was a little bit more serious. We did um, uh, uh, an activity called if you knew me dot 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 again it's a writing activity so uh, we ask students it, uh, to fill in a card uh, to complete the statement if you really knew me if you really knew me you would know that dot 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 and um we're staggered at the honesty the raw honesty of students in uh, responding to this uh, and once they'd done it, they, it was all anonymous, of course, but once they'd done it, they'd uh, safety pinned them up onto a net, onto a sheet that we had hung up on the concourse, on that public space in the Sixth Form College, and um, for other people to read. So um, they, here are some of the things that they, uh, they said, if this will work. If you knew me, you'd know that my outward confidence is a facade, especially when I talk to girls. <laughs> you know that I'm not as happy as you think. You know that I'm actually insecure about a lot of things. I just put up a front to others. I hate not being in control of my emotions. I've never felt good enough. What was profound, very moving, and in a way quite sad was that so much of this was students kind of owning up to things they feel about themselves that they probably rarely tell anybody else and yet they were prepared to write these things up and to pin them up on a on a sheet for others to see and again it um so 
it allowed for a it's like almost a corporate sense of honesty in college about being honest about what we're facing but again it also opened up opportunities for conversations with students um, particularly pastoral conversations so these prayer based activities can have they're not just for something for a young person to do on their own in their own little bubble and then to move on from they we hope that they teach skills that can be could be applied to the rest of life but also that they stimulate conversation and so that one of the great values of prayer spaces is that they allow uh, you as chaplains and any any others that you volunteers that you can have to help you to engage in those conversations with conversations with students to help students to open up and um, to be support um, a helpful even prayerful support here's here's some of the things that uh, students say about um, this this type of type of prayer space I'll just let you have a, a read for a moment So we found that students really appreciate these kinds of activities. And um, I've talked through in a little bit of detail some of the different types of activity you might put into a space. Um, uh, prayer Spaces in Schools have got a website, prayerspacesinschools.com, and there all of, lots of these resources are available for free to download from there. Uh, you, they are searchable, so you can search them by theme. Um, and you're welcome to all you need to to download stuff is to register with your name and an email address and then you can download stuff and try it out so that's the the first type of prayer space that we we ran but we discovered that the a bit like the statement at the beginning it, it it's not about just running a prayer space as if it was a sort of product it's about making space for prayer or reflection in a school and college setting and uh, we found all sorts of other ways of creating moments when students can pause and reflect or pray um, uh, around other themes and at different times one of the big ones was this one which is remembrance um, so we created this sort of uh, stitched together banner of fields and clouds and and that the, and which we called the Remembrance Meadow. Again, we set it up on the concourse in the Sixth Form College. And um, over a few evenings, we cut out a lot of fabric flower shapes. Uh, get get your friendly volunteers to do that sort of thing. And then we have fabric pens. And we invited people at, during Remembrance Week to write a memory or tribute to somebody that they had known that, that had died. So tapping into the fact that it was Remembrance Day coming up, but giving anybody in college students and staff a space to remember people that have been close to them that, that have died and um, and many 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 did um, so uh, and again it provided an opportunity for conversation what I find interesting about remembrance and we've run this in schools as well is that you would imagine this will be a very sad place but actually they're very celebratory places uh, in conversation with people remembering uh, you know, what the question i would often ask if somebody was writing something is who are you remembering today you know what's the what's the story about them and most often people are glad to talk about that person that they've lost there's there's something that as they're writing, there's something of a, of a celebration of that person's life is, is why they're writing it. They're writing it because this person mattered and because they want other people to know about them. And that can be an incredibly helpful thing for, uh, for, for people to be able to do and to be able to do it together. So again, this is an opportunity. It's, it's every person's response is individual, but they're doing it as part of a corporate expression of remembrance. And so that can be, really powerful we've done it in other ways we did it with them um, this cardboard tree so this gray cardboard tree we rescued from tesco one year after it was a display tree that tesco had so we said could we have it when you finished with it and they said yes and uh, 
it's it served us well and so we had uh, cut out we cut out acetate flower shapes um as another way of doing that so the first one was fabric flowers onto a meadow this is uh, cut out shapes and treasury tags and people write on them with a marker and then hang them to the tree same same idea on another year we've got this massive white camouflage net and so we had colored ribbon and we got people to write names or tributes onto colored ribbon and then tie them into the net um but they don't have to be as big and grand as that in this is in a school but this could equally be in the foyer of your college uh, there was this sort of strange unused space underneath the stairwell uh, and we took it over as a remembrance space um, and gave students an opportunity to write onto uh, luggage tags and leave them on the chair that you can see in the corner there or what you can't see between the pillars uh, on the sort of middle right there's um, ribbons hanging down from the ceiling and we got people to write onto uh, flower shapes or leaf shapes and to um, staple them onto the ribbon so they were hanging from the hang from the ceiling and again only break time and lunchtime but lots and lots of students and staff took part in that so remembrance can be a great it's a, a useful example of that but you could equally do this sort of um, pop-up prayer activity for a short time around a single focus at other times we've done them around Holocaust Memorial so Holocaust Memorial Day coming up uh, at the end of this week uh, and we've done this in uh, in both colleges and just set up a simple display and an interactive activity so you can see on this photo um, on the right there's uh, one of those sort of fabric flame things they have in nightclubs uh, which we were able to borrow uh, and uh, some mesh around it and people were tying ribbons so we're writing on ribbons tying them into that but again giving people an opportunity to reflect on holocaust and then to write their thoughts their feelings or their prayers so we give them that option you write your thoughts your feelings or your prayers about what you've read about this event onto a ribbon and tie it into the net and it just creates a, mo a, a moment of spiritual reflection whether someone has a faith or not whether they're a christian or not but it gives people a moment to pause and to reflect and if they wish to pray um, and creates quite a quite a buzz that was there i think it was only there for a day that one um, this was in um a, you know it just just a simple display and a an led tree and some ribbons and this was in colchester institute and um it was in a corridor students were passing by so the chaplain and one of the um student services people uh were just overseeing this and inviting students to pause to read to reflect and if they wanted to to respond by uh writing on a ribbon and tying it onto the uh, the led tree that was next to it so again just creating a, a, a moment a pause um to reflect so prayer spaces don't have to be big and complicated but uh, even a simple one like this can can create quite a, a sort of spiritual buzz around the place and then um also quite seriously i suppose the you can we've used prayer spaces as a way of helping students to mark a bereavement so when a student has died in school or in college um, we will bring some resources in that give people a place where they can write a tribute or a memory they can pause they can reflect um, uh, around that around that death um, and we've we've sort of become the go-to people so schools if the schools have a locally if they have a student death uh, we're often one of the first people they call to come in and help them support them with that but we've done this in the college as well when there's been a, an unexpected student death and these things can be incredibly helpful because as as sort of outsiders you're not as connected to the the, the students and the staff in in quite the same way and can be there as a support um, so um moving on another way that we've um uh, another very very simple example of a single activity was this one this was in Colchester Institute uh, quite a few years ago for their equality and diversity week and they asked if we could come in and do a single activity just for a few days and so uh, we we did this this is called uh, uh, big questions and it's uh, it's simply ask the question if God did exist what would you ask 
And so we had uh, those cards you can see hanging from the strings from the ceiling. The uh, the card is pre-printed with a question across the top. If God did exist, what would you ask? And people write their answer on the card. And there was a refectory just to the left. And so um, whenever that was full, we'd take a bundle of cards through and some pens, uh, chat to people around the tables and just leave them the cards and say, uh, if you'd like to fill one of these in, you know, we'd, we'd love to, this is something that's happening in the college this week as part of your quality and diversity week. Uh, if you'd like to fill a card in and then bring it back to us, I think we gave, we've given people chocolate, actually. I think we're incentivizing them with chocolate, which helps. Um, so they so will give you some chocolate. And, uh, uh, and many students did. But what was, what was great fun was leaving sort of five or six cards on a table with some pens. And as you walk away, hearing these students talking them, to the, talking to each other about well, what would you ask, what, and and discussing the question that they would ask. Um, so again, it created it's like a pop up prayer space. It created a little buzz of activity, a little buzz of thinking about if there's a God, what would I ask? Um, something that they probably would never even have thought about. So as I mentioned, um, prayer activities are great conversation starters. Uh, this is where your chaplaincy team is so, so vital. And um, we've found that um, prayer spaces are a great way of involving the local church. Uh, obviously, the right kind of people from the local church, people that are good at uh, holding a conversation, good, are comfortable with question, that are able to be welcoming and inclusive, and that come with a DBS certificate. Um, but um, And in the colleges where we work, probably where you work as well, uh, we have to go through a visitor check process, so we have to do all that in advance, and that's fine. But having those visitors in means you've got more people available to speak with more students. And um, uh, as I've hinted already, some of the conversations that can flow out of these activities, they can start a conversation that just probably wouldn't have started in any other way. Um, we've run these spaces uh, once, a, so that the sanctum thing that I showed you with the with the sort of the on the concourse, we've run that once a year in the college for a whole for a whole way would be anywhere between three days and a whole week. Um, remembrance uh, again. Sometimes we've run that for a week. Sometimes we've run it just for a few days. Um, but there are other ways of sort of bringing reflection and prayer out into the college life. And um, one of the ways we did this was with this one which was our prayer space in a suitcase. So we took one activity, uh, in this case, an activity that helps people to think about their character. And uh, we put it in a suitcase and the chaplain would carry it around with them. And if they saw a bunch of students, they would engage them in conversation, say, would you like to have a go at this? And because there's a certain amount of intrigue and mystery about it, and because this chaplain is a known person, most students would go, yeah, come on then. And so the chaplain is the, uh, which one of these is the chaplain? Uh, it's the one in, in the purple dress, middle, the middle one on the right, uh, facing the camera. So that's Mim. Uh, she was a student at the college. And in her first year, she became Christian. And um, so that changed her plans for her, her plans for university. So she decided not to go to university straight after sixth form, but to go, she went to work with her church. And so she worked with her church for a couple of years. And then she came to work with us as chaplain in the college for a couple of years. So she was back in the college as their chaplain, uh, age 20, and um, had a huge, huge impact on among students there. And after a couple of years of that, she then went off to study psychology at Bristol. Um, so here's Mim with the suitcase, and it's got a character activity in it, which is where you've got 20 cards with a set of words on them. We can read here, love, trust, kindness, strength, uh, inspiration, respect. And what you do is you get two students to choose the two cards that best describes the other person. And then you have a conversation about why. And so each student gets to say, put lots of positive things, lovely positive things about the other student. So, um, but you could put other activities in there as well. We've done, uh, we've, we've taken other of the activities that I've suggested, we've, we've take, taken those around in the suitcase. So there's always something different in the suitcase. That's a bit of mystery to it. So another way of doing a reflective space in the college. <clears throat> uh, coming out of the um, uh, 
so coming out of the towards the end of the pandemic in the summer of 21 we did a uh, an activity called refresh which was a way of ref helping students to reflect on the year and a half that they'd been through um all the lockdown stuff and then the being back in college stuff and we did that in schools and in both of the colleges where we work uh, at college to six on college we had to run it in this white party tent because there wasn't any space anywhere else but it was uh, the summer so that was all right and also because it was a white party tent that we borrowed from a local church uh, it made it a bit of an attraction and students came over to have a look to see what it was and we had about eight activities in there and it helped students reflect on uh on their experience of the pandemic up to that point. And we asked them to think about what is it that they want to leave behind? So there was a leaving behind activity. What do they want to hold on to? What's been good that they want to celebrate, remember and hold on to? And uh, what are their hopes and dreams for the future? Uh, and then there were a couple of other activities in there as well. And so we had uh, quite a few dozen students came and did that over three days. Uh, creating again creating a spiritual buzz we did the same thing at uh, Cotter Institute using one of their gazebos the college gazebos uh, you see our chaplaincy banner there and we even had some some classes uh, I think some tutor groups the tutors said said to the, the, the tutor group said you need to be down here we're going to go and do this thing during tutor time so they took them all down the tutor time and uh, our chaplain Bex there is talking to a bunch of uh, students as their tutors look on um, and then another activity that we've done in a sort of reflective prayerful style is a thing that we call unrepeatable which is um, again eight, about eight different activities that help students reflect on their their lives at the moment and their hopes and dreams of the future are around uh, their skills their career vocation so it ties into if you're in an HG in FE college it ties into um, the progression um, the progression agenda, uh, careers, advice, um, but again has a reflective, prayerful kind of quality to it. Uh, these students here are thinking about some uh, possible uh, life direction using a set of cards we had made. And so um, these sorts of things, uh, again, some quotes from some students, uh, they say, So that's a, a little bit of an overview of um, some of the stuff that we've done in Colchester. Uh, I make no apology for going that sort of, sort of telling you about that because um, I hope there's some real world examples there. I'll just pause for a moment. Um, if anybody's got any any questions or thoughts to add, um, uh, and then in a moment, what I want to do is go through some a model for thinking about relational spirituality and then i'll talk a little bit about a sort of just a, a a simple sort of theology for why what we're doing with these things when we run them but i want to just give a little bit of a pause for a moment um in case there are any questions or other thoughts around this um, whether nigel wants to stir the pot at all um, as as you're speaking, actually, Tim, um, it's clear there's strong relationship at the start and trust. How long did it take? Because there will be some people here who are thinking, mm, not at that stage yet. Mm. Yeah, I think these things very much are can be step by step. Um, the Sixth Form College back in 2009, when we did that first prayer space, we actually hadn't really done anything in the Sixth Form College up till then. Um, but there was a, a senior member of staff who'd heard about Sanctum, about the prayer space that we'd run in a, 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 another school. And I said, this is only the third one that we'd ever run. Um, but they said, we should have this in the college. And so, um, and so we and so we did so i think sometimes it, it you know, the, the door can open wide quite suddenly if the right person says, sees something that you're doing and goes yes this is what we need to have here um so i think it's always a case of finding 
finding that gatekeeper person and they won't always be the well or rarely will they be the principal the principal might well be supportive but they don't tend to have the uh the the day-to-day -day sort of executive function they're a bit, bit higher up than that um but there might be a faculty leader or um one of the the vice principals who uh does have an ear for what you're doing uh, when it came to Cotter Institute we it's an it's a we've been praying for them for ages and um, I still have on record somewhere an email from them saying that they didn't want a chaplaincy service. Uh, 18 months later, I found myself in a room with their senior leadership team and our chaplain from the Sixth Form College discussing starting chaplaincy at the end of that month. Um, so things can change quickly. We prayed much about that college. We met with anybody in, the col in that college who would uh, who would be happy to meet for a coffee and a conversation about what this might look like. We had quite a few Christian members of staff who met with us and uh, to discuss it. So just an English teacher, um, a somebody involved in student services. Um, and they met with us very informally in the, in the refectory to discuss what this might look like. Uh, as a result of which they then went to their seniors and said, I've had the conversation about this. I think this is something that we ought to look into. And so I think that it, it, sort of a little by little, it um, news got around and eventually got to the right person who said, let's have a look at this properly. As a result of which we had that meeting in the middle of August, um, as a result of which Chancellor started that September. Um, so it, it's a very relational thing. The email correspondence that we'd had with them beforehand had meant virtually nothing. Hence the reply to say, we don't, we're not looking for a chaplaincy service. But the relational connection that built up was what opened the door for us there. Um, but it took us a while to get there. Thanks, Tim. I do think the um, I think the pop up model is a helpful thing. So the Culture Institute, that one, the Equality and Diversity Week, that was in 2013. We only started chaplaincy there five years later, um, and nothing much happened in between. But that 2013 was it, it. It kind of was the first knock on the door, um, and we were invited in as part of Equality and Diversity Week. So that was that kind of gave us cover to be there because that was part of their uh, equality and diversity provision um, and it allowed us to do one thing well that did make an impact and so i think this the pop-up model can be really helpful because it, you're offering a single uh, single focus probably just for a very limited amount of time if it's within the context of a broader week that's the the college are doing then that sort of legitimizes some Christian presence of some sort, uh, but it can be uh, it can be a way of demonstrating that you're trustworthy people, that you're good to work with, that you deliver well, and that the project makes a difference to uh, students. And that's obviously what colleges are looking for. So something small and simple. Don't don't um, you know? Don't overlook the opportunity for us for a simple um, activity that will get you in the door hmm. so um shall I, if I press on if you're if you're still okay there um uh, back in 2017 um the hi catherine <laughs> um back in 2017 um the uh press based in schools uh, conducted some academic level research into the impact of prayer spaces on uh, the spiritual life of children and young people. Uh, this is in primary schools and secondary schools, but I think the, the findings are valid for FE as well. And um, the research was based around uh, a concept of spirituality that uh, is called relational, uh, spirituality is relational consciousness, a spiritual, a relational spirituality. And it, it, uh, embraces these four dimensions, which probably aren't new to you. Uh, you probably recognize these. So relationships with myself, my own well-being, relating to others, so love and care for others, relating to the earth, so that's stewardship or justice, and relating to the beyond, to God or the divine. 
And we found that uh, these four dimensions are a helpful way of thinking about what it is we are taking into schools and colleges when we run prayer spaces and uh, where we can to ensure that uh, each of these is uh, is covered in one way or another. So the first one, reconciliation, me and myself, and there are uh, ways to help young people to be at peace with themselves. I think you've probably already recognised in some of the activities I've described that um, uh, some of those activities give young people a way of reflecting on themselves positively and um, and finding a sense of calm or peace. So we've got the, for example, the calm activity, which is a glitter jar and a narration and a quiet, uninterrupted space and an opportunity just to be still. And what we find is that students of all ages really appreciate the opportunity just to be still and to be calm and to be with themselves. Um, the next one is uh, reconciliation. So me and others. So the whole thing of restoring and healing broken relationships. Um, uh, we've looked at the uh, the sorry activity. Here are some uh, sorry cards from the Sixth Form College. Students said, I'm sorry. Sorry, I pushed you away when you were trying to help. I didn't mean to say them things. I love you, X. Um, I'm sorry for all the hurtful things I've said and done. I'm sorry I can't be a good person all the time. I'm sorry for not appreciating everything and all the people I'm blessed with. And then, quite movingly, I'm sorry that when I left, I never said goodbye. Um, we find that... Um, uh, activities like the sorry activity, uh, again, there's a profound honesty about students. They know that other people will be able to read these, and yet uh, they often share some of the um, most heartfelt uh, things. I was in a, a school with the sixth form, and uh, we're looking across, and there was a, a one of the activities that we do is a forgiving activity where students. Um, it involves holding a stone as representing the hurt that someone else has inflicted on you. And then it talks about forgiveness in terms of letting go of the hurt that others have done to us, the act of letting go of that hurt. And so students are then invited to let go of that stone and to either drop it into a bucket of water if they feel ready to let go of that hurt, or if they don't feel they're yet ready, to just put it back on the pile of stones in front of the bucket of water. So. They, it doesn't force them into a response. It, uh, it gives them the choice about the response that they make. Uh, we've had, I've had students who have said, I, had, I tried doing that on the Tuesday and I felt I couldn't do it, but I came back this lunchtime on the Thursday and today I feel I can. Um, I was looking across at a sixth form girl who was crying on the shoulder of another sixth form girl and um, so just wanted to check that things are all right um, when there are tears. I sent one of the female team members over to check and uh, she went and she said, uh, are you OK? And this girl through her tears said yes. And then um, this team member asked the most brilliant question, which was, are these happy tears or sad tears? And um, so I've, I've, I've remembered that one. Oh, I'm going to use that one again. But uh, are these happy tears or had tears, sad tears? And the girl said, they're happy tears. And out of that came a conversation. And the girl was able to explain that she'd done this forgiving activity. She'd let go of the stone and she'd felt such a sense of release and relief at the forgiveness of letting go of the hurt this other person had done that she'd cried. And her friend had come across to comfort her and was talking to her when I spotted what was going on and the team member that went over and, and asked. So we know these uh, these activities can have a pr very profound effect on young people and a, a quite a liberating effect. I had a, a year nine boy who said of that same activity, the forgiving activity, he said, uh, I felt I finally was able to let go of something that I've been holding on to since primary school. And he's year nine. So that's at least three years that he's that thing has been with him. So reconciliation, me and others, um, we know that these activities can have a deeply uh, profound impact on, uh, on 
young people. And then um, reconciliation, me and the world, uh, to seek justice and peace in the world. We think it's really, really important that, that prayer spaces or any of these reflective spaces that we're doing have an outward dimension to them, that a way that uh, engages students in the, the world beyond themselves. Otherwise, the whole thing can be, can be very me, 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 all about my life. Um, and so we tend to have an activity that gets, helps them to engage in a world issue and to make a choice about their response, um, whether that's about expressing their feelings or thoughts or a prayer or even an activity, an action to do. This one was um, one we call Refugee Rucksack. This is on the Prayer Space in Schools website, so you could download this one. And it, um, it looks at those who are fleeing persecution um, or war and uh, who can only take what they can carry in a rucksack. And it asks students to think about if they were fleeing, what would they want to put in a rucksack? It has to fit in the rucksack, so they can't take their 55-inch TV with them, I'm afraid. But if they can fit it in a rucksack, they can. And we've got some examples of stuff that people have got in rucksacks. There's a mother with the medication for her child. So the child's got an illness and so most of their rucksack is filled with the child's medication you start to realize what's really really important in life uh, one of them is a graphic designer from syria so he's a guy who ran had a uh, a graphic design business had a, a design business um and had to flee and leave it all behind and so one of the things a couple of things he's got in his rucksack are memory sticks with some of his best work on it so that he could start up again um when he uh, settles somewhere new so again, it just helps you realise what's really important, what would we take? And so students write on one side of the card the things that they would want to take. So that that's, uh, gets them thinking about that. And then on the flip side of the card, they write down their thoughts, their feelings or their prayer for the situation that they've just been reading about. And you can see on this table, lots and lots of students have done that. When we ran this in the uh, Sixth Form College, um, uh, we um, it combined it with... Um, uh, this was combined with Holocaust Memorial. And um, so the college linked up with the local arts the uh, local uh, visual arts center called First Sight here in Colchester, and uh, which was a museum of the year last year. Let me let me just big up First Sight in Colchester, museum of the year last year. Anyway, so they um, they were doing some wanting to do some work around Holocaust Memorial. And so they had this tie up with the chaplaincy in the Sixth Hall College and a group of students and the chaplain went across to first sight and set up this exhibition of rucksacks uh, as a, as a visual representation of people fleeing um and uh, that i think that stayed there for a week before it was it was recovered so opportunities for for connections and to to tie up across uh, across the town and and with other organizations as well and to equip and enable students to do something more than just have to sit there and have a think they were able to do something that that spoke to the town as well so thinking beyond ourselves um me and the world and then finally of course the big one reconciliation me and god uh, and giving students a way to connect with god in in whatever way makes sense for them and um i've talked the uh, the big questions activity if god did exist what would you ask so this was that activity in Colchester Institute before we had chaplaincy running there, but we were able to ask hundreds of, I think, again, about 300 students we asked over the course of just two days, uh, if God did exist, what would you ask? And we got students talking to their mates about a God that they may or may not believe in, but what they would ask if they could, um, if they could ask them a question and then pegged up and then students other people could walk past and have a read and see what other people had written so um it's just a simple framework for thinking about how we the kind of activities that we might put into a space and and the shape that that gives to the student experience um around those four dimensions relationship with myself relationship with others relationship with the world and relationship with god or with the other so um, just another little pause there, and then I'll talk us through a little bit of theology and then we'll be nearly done. So I don't know if there's any other thoughts, ideas, input. Have any of you, have any of you done any of this kind of 
thing. Who have we got in the room? Has anybody here actually tried one of these, uh, these something like this? John? Yeah, I, these, um, I mean, this is all, this all feels very familiar. Uh, we run a, a prayer space um, sort of program that we call Reflect um, and, uh, and have been doing that probably since 2011. Um, I think um, I think what's really interesting and um, and where I uh, kind of I'm particularly interested at the moment is transferring my uh, experience of secondary school and and transferring that into the post sixteen the FE experience mm -hmm. and I think I think I I, I don't know you, you know you get that sort of sense of you know, I know exactly how to do this and approach it, set it up and, and execute it in secondary school. There's some sort of magic formula for FE that I'm not getting. And I, and I, and, you know, we have the Telford College, which, which uh, I'm really keen to, to work with. And the, um, I mean, there's 15 secondary schools in Telford um, and we're working with probably eight of them at the moment, but, but the, uh, but the Telford college is one I'm really keen to, to, um, to, to work with. And so that, that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's helpful hearing some of your thoughts, even if, you know, some of it is just that encouragement that actually it's pretty much the same as what I'd expect in a secondary school. There'll be a person of peace that opens the door, you know, that's very encouraging. Yeah, thank you. Um, yes, uh, so it's one of the distinctives. Oh, Deborah. Oh, um, uh, I, I just uh, the problem. I've done this in secondary schools, but now I'm uh, in FV, and the problem always seems to be space. Mm. Here, it, it's mm. just really difficult, and um, I just wondered whether you'd explored a sort of online, you know, prayer spaces actually yes we did um um we did something during during lockdown when everybody was at home um we did an online version of uh the thing i called unrepeatable which is <clears throat> it was called unrepeatable because it was about your life so we were saying to students your life is unrepeatable you live an unrepeatable life because no one else can live the life you will live and um so it was around it was particularly constructed around vacations and careers. And we did some of that online. And what um, uh, the way that worked was that there was a worksheet that goes with it. So as students do the activities, we did them in, normally they'd be in the room and students would free flow around the room to the activities that were free and they would do them. And then, but there was a worksheet, there was a worksheet that went with it or a booklet as the students wanted to call it, which is good, much better than the worksheet, isn't it? Um, and they would complete what they would discover about themselves at each of these stations. They would record that. And so what happened was it builds up over the course of the session and they go away with a booklet of unique things about themselves. And we were saying, this is, it's a personal statement this is now no longer a thing for universities. They finally decided to kill it off. But we're saying this is useful information for if you have to write a personal statement about yourself, because what you'll be able to do is you'll say, you know, you'll have discovered truths about yourself um, that um, you can include in these statements or in applications or that sort of thing. So um, so what we did was rather than have them free flow around the room, we did these activities. We did a small, small number of them. I think we did six, but in sequence. Um, and we delivered that through Zoom and um, with a slideshow like I'm doing now and a couple of videos in it as well. But the worksheets had been sent out in advance to students uh, and I th think they were expected to, well, they, 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 were, they were printed off and sent out to the students, I think. Um, somehow they got hold of the worksheet so they could complete that at home. So yes, it, it did translate into an online version. Um, the other thing is that um, our, our chaplain at Coxeter Institute, um, she recorded some videos about uh, sort of around mindfulness practice, about car, um, calming techniques for exams. Um, and um, so she recorded short videos about those which were put onto the college Moodle so that students could access them. Um, so yeah, we've used a little bit of online, but um, and it and it can be effective and helpful, but it's nothing quite like a real person. And um, 
wherever we can, we try and uh, arrange to be face to face. But that also is where when you're doing these slight projects that need a few more people, I just think it's a perfect opportunity to bring in some of your best people from churches who can who can be there and help. And the thing I often say, Bev will have probably heard me say this before, but there's something special about Christians doing this stuff. And and that is, as Paul says in Colossians 1.27, is he talks about Christ in you, the hope of glory. And it's there's some in a way, yeah, I say this slightly flippantly, in a way, any old fool can put a lot of re reflective activities in a room and students can have a good time. But I think something different and special happens when Christians bring themselves to this as well. They bring a spiritual dimension that is uh, that makes a tangible difference. And that doesn't mean that they necessarily um, expect that students will embrace the Christian faith of the person of the, that's leading the activity, uh, but they bring a kind of spiritual quality to it because they are spiritual people themselves in a in a particularly distinctive way. And so I think that that that's that really helps, and it um, it's it's good to have a few more people around sometimes to pick up those conversations. And Tim, just one question I've got. Um, mm -hmm. Andy Dodwell here. Yeah. Um, a, a large number, not all of them, but quite a lot of these work around students reading um, and then writing. Mm -hmm. um, one of the spaces I work with is with um, students with visual impairment, um, the right. Blind mm -hmm. College. Um, yeah. Any thoughts on particularly mm. using some of this stuff. I like the the, the idea of um, the press base in a case, mm. but um, my, my students won't see the case necessarily, yeah. <laughs> um, let alone be able to yeah. read the cards, for instance. Um, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, we've uh, we did we did do some work on accessibility um, around this, not least because in Cottage Institute, we're working with large numbers of students um, for whom English was their second, third, fourth or <laughs> entry level language. Um, for uh, some of the activities that we do, we had um, we've got these little things I can show you. Um, there we go. These little iPod, tiny iPod things. You can't, they don't make them anymore now. They were perfect for what we needed. They were 50 quid. And they, I know it's you know, 50 quid is 50 quid, but once you've got them, they last you forever. And we would, we would record tracks on them. And so students could listen to them. And I think um, for visually impaired students, that, that was, that was brilliant because they could put the headphones on and listen. Um, we would sometimes, uh, you can still get them, you have to buy them second hand, you've got to poke, poke around on eBay for them, but but they don't don't cost a huge amount. So, and I think they're, they're just a really effective way of doing it. They're small and simple. Um, nowadays, everybody listens to stuff on their phones, but you don't want to be spending several hundred pounds per student. Um, uh, for um, students for whom English was their, was not their native language, not their first language. We would um, we'd write out the text of what was on the on the um, narration, so they could read as they hear. Um, and uh, foreign language students found that really helpful, uh, not least because it helped with their language skills. But it meant uh, it's easier sometimes to be able to read it as you hear it. Um, <clears throat> but I think um, for visually impaired students, I would have thought that audio doing these things on audio is an absolute gift. Um, you need to script it obviously um allow time allow pauses so if there's a, a, a reflection moment or something give people a good moment to pause uh we would put a bit of backing music on them just in the background just gives you something it's because a, a, a pause that's completely silent is a bit weird um a little bit of background background music on them which we would stick on there you have to work out how you do that for yourself <laughs> in the way that you're happy with that's copyright compliant but um uh uh i say make sure the pauses are big enough for people to actually think their thoughts in them but i think that can be and then you need somebody who's got a good voice we we wouldn't we didn't release these press facing schools didn't release these as um as audio files because we thought it's really important that voices are local so you know if you are in in durham then you want to have some northeast voices doing these things. If you're down here in Colchester, you can have estuary English, it's fine. Um, <clears throat> but uh, uh, I would say try to go for audio.
Um, but uh, thank you for raising that, um, Andy, because, uh, yeah, accessibility is a really important thing. And again, you know, the, the, the great accessibility, the inclusivity thing in a college, um, I mean, partic it, yes, it's so in schools, but I think it's even more so in FE colleges. We have to recognize that we, if we, we go into these places, if we're going into these places as Christians, we go with the welcome of Jesus to all and we include all and we make sure that what we do is accessible to all. And I think the important thing about prayer space is, is that they give to students agency to make their own meaning from the activity. So at one level, we take a risk that people will decide for themselves something that might not be the thing that we would hope they decide. But we have to absolutely guarantee that that's a possibility that students can decide for themselves on from the activity, that none of the activities shoehorn people into a specific response, but perhaps that any Christian content becomes the starting point for a consideration of the issue from which the student will make their own meaning. So they have agency to make their own meaning. I think it's really, really important about how we do these things. And paradoxically, I think by allowing that freedom, people are warmer to any faith kind of dimension that there is to the project. Um, it's almost, you know, I've said, said to others, the, the less we push, the, the more easy it is for people to pull. Um, uh, but that, inclus that inclusivity and diversity aspect is really, really important. Thanks, Andy. I got yeah, I was dug a lot out of that one. That's really helpful. Anyone else got um, experience that would be helpful to share or questions that uh, it would be useful to bat around? Um, got another fifteen minutes or so. I'll um, I'll just share a little bit of sort of the theology of these spaces. Uh, which again is not this is not um, this is not massively deep or hugely profound, but I think it just gives us a little bit of shape to what we think we're doing as Christians in the space and what these spaces do for uh, uh, students and staff. So um, back to here we go. A little theology. Um, here we go. Here's a student writing a big question onto a piece of cardboard, and somebody's previously written, "Does God exist?" as well as a few others. Um, <clears throat> our starting point, of course, for all of this, uh, from a Christian theological point of view, is that God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. So that we are created in the image of God, and that means that young people are spiritual. We are all spiritual beings. Um, and um, that means that our responses come in from a spiritual place however we define that or recognize that so young people will ask questions like why don't you show yourself or what do you do with people once you've taken them away from us those are spiritual questions if he's real where was he in the hard times spiritual questions because young people are spiritual the second thing um we as christians we believe that god is missional which means that god god goes to meet with people god is in the is is active is proactive in reaching out to people um this post-it note which we've seen before um not necessarily reaching out to god but thank you for bringing me through the hardest thing in my life and putting me back on track um kind of could be a reflection of uh, somebody expressing the thankfulness to God who has reached out and helped them. And then um, thirdly, we believe that God welcomes everyone. I've talked about uh, inclusivity, um, welcoming all. Um, we believe that God welcomes everyone unconditionally. Um, I'm still, you know, there's the Jesus healed 10 lepers. There's a story of Jesus healing 10 lepers, but there's only one that came back and recognized Jesus for who he fully was. The other nine, we're quite happy to take their healing and, and go on their way. Um, but God welcomes everyone. And um, we sometimes see that reflected. Sorry for not being, not sorry for not believing that you were there until I wanted something. 
And person said, God, do you like me? The fourth uh, point is that uh, we believe that God hears and cares. Um, we see that in the response of uh, of young people. So here in Colchester, we've got um, three three regiments based in Colchester: two para, three para, and one other, one of the other ones. And at the time uh, that many of the troops here were based in Afghanistan, we were frequently got prayers posted onto the prayer wall, where students just write their prayers onto a post-it note and stick it on the window. This one for my dad to be safe in Afghan. Um, uh, this one. Make sure me and my family stay safe and work things out in hard times. So uh, hopes and prayers, what are you hoping for, what are you praying for? We believe that God hears and he cares. And we see that reflected in the response of young people. Please help me control my anger. I pray that I get noticed. But then we also believe that God uh, speaks and acts. And um, we do see young people changed by the press spaces that they've been involved in. We see young people uh, it, with, with greater confidence. Today has made me feel more confident. Um, this young person wrote about uh, our, one of our press spaces. It's made me believe that someone is looking out for me. And then I think the, the final thing is that um, we believe that the church is here to be a blessing and chaplaincy is definitely here to be a blessing. If you're already a chaplain in the college, you'll know how how appreciated your ministry is. Um, we've it still surprises me and delights me the way that people will come up to a chaplain and talk about things that they wouldn't probably wouldn't talk to anybody else about. It's just that there's no one else in their life that is that person is that neutral friend that neutral um person that they can talk to about pretty much anything um approachable and the church is here to be a blessing and you are a blessing but uh, these spaces allow us to serve and support colleges in ways that colleges wouldn't normally be able to do themselves they often, they pretty much don't have the resources to do these sorts of things and yet they appreciate the the spiritual and the well-being benefits that uh, these kind of spaces can bring to students, to staff, and kind of to the whole vibe and the atmosphere of a college. These places feel different when these activities are going on. And as I've said before a couple of times, they can be a brilliant way of involving the church. And I, I particularly would want to talk to the church about FE and say, because church is often quite connected to the local primary schools, they can be slightly less connected to the local secondary schools, but giving it a go. But when it comes to FE, uh, very often they're nowhere to be seen. And um, we've been delighted uh, and really so grateful to people who we've involved in secondary schools who have then said, could you come and help us in the local FE college? And they've come and helped us as well. So I would say um, uh, do what you can to nurture those relationships with, uh, with good people in, in your churches who would be good with students and um, encourage them to get involved uh, and to kind of build out a volunteer chaplaincy team if you possibly, possibly can. Um, it's really important that the church understands what's going on in FE and continues to pray for and support students uh, at that critical phase in their life. Um, so we're here to be a blessing and so whatever we can do to be a blessing, uh, practically and prayerfully, let's do it. Um, I'm going to end on a, on a couple of quotes and then just a, a thought from me about FE. So we quote these pretty much wherever we go because we feel it just sums up why we believe prayer spaces are so important for people, which is this one from Mark Iaconelli, who wrote a brilliant, brilliant book called Contemplative Youth Ministry, which if you haven't read it, it should be on your reading list. Um, I think it's still available. So Contemplative Youth Ministry, Mark Iaconelli, in a society gone mad with feverish activity, which definitely describes life at the moment. Perhaps the gospel, the love of God and the freedom of Jesus Christ are best communicated by inviting young people to rest and pray like Jesus. It is prayer much more than words that will allow young people to feel the power and freedom of God's love. And um, 
Henri Nouwen, in his book, The Wounded Healer, said this. I'm afraid that in a few decades, the church will be accused of having failed at its most basic task, offering people creative ways to communicate with the source of life. And uh, I just think prayer spaces are, are a beautiful way of giving people creative ways to communicate with the source of life, however they perceive that. But intriguingly, I find that many of them, for many of them, it, it suggests a connection with God that they might not have thought about before. So, uh, so I would say have a go, but from what I've said, there's no fixed formula. Um, it's about making space for prayer in college life, whatever that looks like, however that looks. And, um, uh, uh, and if you do something that uh, doesn't look like anything that I've described, but kind of fits into this mold, we'd love to hear from you. So my parting shot really is prayer spaces in schools. Um, it sort of does what it says on the tin, but I'm, I'm also fairly passionate about FE and schools doesn't describe FE properly. So we ought to be prayer spaces in schools and colleges. And so if you're working in a college, if you're running prayer spaces, I would love to hear from you because I would um, one of the ways in which we try and champion what these spaces can look like is through stories and examples from people that have actually done it. Some of the best work happens at the edge where you are with the people that you're working with. Uh, and so um, I please, please keep in touch with me. My uh, email address is tim at prayerspacesinschools.com. Um, I'm very happy for Nigel to share that with you. Um, but let's see if we can begin to gather some stories from FE that will be an inspiration to others in the sector who um, perhaps aren't on this Zoom call, but um, might be inspired by what you're doing. Uh, the thing that you work out how to do might be, might for them open up the possibility of something that they could do. So um, I'd, I hope in not too, you know, not too long, we can start to feature some stories about FE on the prayer space in schools website and sorry you'll probably have to live with it still being called prayer spaces in schools but let's get some fe into this as well because um we know from us ex our experience here these kinds of activities really really work with those students and staff um staff appreciate them as well and they can have a really profound effect impact on uh, the way that students see themselves understand each other and understand god so uh, i'll pause at that point i hand back to uh, nigel but happy to hang around and answer any more questions or pick up any more great ideas that you've you've already tried nigel thanks very much tim that's brilliant um any last questions for tim i've just got a couple of noticey things to mention this recording will be available um tomorrow by the time I've uh, sort of sorted it out and uh, downloaded it, and it'll be available through the West Midlands Churches FE Council website. 